Hello everyone, and today we're going to be talking about sensors. Before we get talking about sensors, we have to talk about what is a state. Now, state is a very abstract concept in robotics. In short, it is what we want or need to know about a system. We take all of the values that represent the state and concatenate them into a single vector. This is called the state vector. The variable x is used to represent the state. Now, the state is whatever the values you want to know or use for a system. Therefore, you will have different states for different systems. A car and a rocket won't have the same state definition. State variables can be simple, like x or y in a 2D navigation task, or more complicated, like the current quantum state of a particle. We will define our state abstractly so we can derive general mathematics that are independent of our state definition. While this is the goal, often we need to talk about families of states with certain properties in order to prove something mathematically. So there are a couple different examples of state. So we have things like position and velocity. So we are often denote the derivative of a variable with a dot above it. So you have x, y, and z in the velocity x dot, y dot, z dot. Uh, there's also position in like the mass of a car. So it can be things that are not as uh, position based. And then we have like position orientation. So our x, y, z roll pitch yaw of a vehicle and their rates. Uh, they can also be really abstract things like how Matt is feeling about the weather today. Um, it can just kind of depends on what system you're trying to figure out and what you're trying to do with your robot. So there, there are two main types of variables. The first is discrete, and that represents a countably finite set. And all that means is that we're talking about variables with distinct countable numbers. There can be an infinite number of them, but I can't arbitrarily add new values in between the ones that I have already counted. For example, this is all known positive integers. We have one, two, three, all the way going to infinity. While this list never ends, I cannot find a new integer between one and two. Therefore, it is discrete. There is also continuous, which stands for an uncountably infinite set. A good example of a continuous variable is all rational numbers. I can always find a new rational number by taking the middle point between two arbitrary values. For example, let's say I have zero and one, the midpoint is 0.5, and this is also a rational number. If I apply this again, I can get the rational number of 0.25. I can continue this pattern infinitely, which is what makes this uncountably infinite. Now that we have covered the ideas of state, we can talk about a sensor. Simply put, a sensor is any tool that can tell us more about the world around us. You can think of sensors as the senses of your robot. Every sensor reading has some implied error to it. A large focus in robotics is properly characterizing this error and using multiple measurements together to determine a good estimated value. The error can be static or dynamic. We want sensors that can give us a direct measurement about the current state of the robot. Unfortunately, the world is difficult. We must often get by with an indirect measurement of state. The transformation of this value into a state value often induces some additional error. Therefore, the closer a sensor is to giving a direct measurement of the state, the better. A good example of this is if we are trying to estimate the position but only have direct measurements of velocity. We can integrate this value, but the small errors in the velocity calculation will compound during integration. Furthermore, we do not have a measurement of the initial location. So even with a perfect estimate of velocity, we don't know where we started. Finally, sensors give readings in their own body frame. That means we will have sensors that give us information like there's an obstacle 10 meters ahead of you right now. We will have to use coordinate frame transformations like we have discussed previously to give us what it means in our global reference frame. The important thing to remember is that every reading has some error, and only through combining multiple readings using some fancy math can we seek to determine something useful about our robot. So the first sensor we'll be talking about is the camera. You are all very probably very familiar with how cameras work. Essentially what it does is it takes a representation of the light around in, a, in the world and presents it on a 2D plane called an image. Now cameras are really useful sensors because they give a high information density but they're also hard to determine what's being useful out of an image. How often have you looked at an image and not been able to figure out what's in it? So the next sensor we have is a magnetometer. So a magnetometer essentially acts like a compass. It gives you a reading of a magnetic field um, so we can figure out where north should lie uh, and we can orient our robot based on that. An IMU, or inertial measurement unit, is a sensor for detecting general motion. It does this through two main sensors. The first is an accelerometer. This gives you some estimate of how fast you are accelerating the second is a gyroscope, which gives an estimate of how fast you are rotating. This is the kind of sensor that is used to determine when your phone has been rotated over. The next sensor we have is GPS. GPS gives us a direct measurement of position, and there's not a lot of other sensors that can give us things like this. How GPS works is there's a bunch of satellites orbiting around the world, and as they do so, they send essentially an update of their position to your GPS. 
and you're going to be receiving that through a thing called an antenna. So there are large antennas that look like this, or small antennas that are like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to combine all these estimates of their positions together to determine what your position is. And that's going to be done on this thing called a receiver that looks like this. And it's only through using multiple satellites we'll be able to get a good estimate of our current position. The next sensor is encoders. Encoders give us an estimate of how fast some axle is spinning. You do this by fixing an axle to the actual encoder disk. And then as the axle rotates, this disk will rotate. And through this rotation, what you'll end up seeing is that these little black lines put along on this disk will cross some sensor. And every time they do, that'll represent as a tick. And using that, you can figure out how many ticks you have per second. That can give you an estimate of how quickly your axle is rotating. The final sensor we'll be talking about is the LiDAR. The LiDAR uses beams of light to estimate the distance to certain objects. There's a wide variety of LiDARs. The most common is a one-dimensional LiDAR. And what it does is it sends out a beam of light in a single axis, and then you rotate that at some rate. So you get a 360 measurement, but only on a single plane. There are other LiDARs, like the one that we have here. Um, and what it does is they take a single beam, and then they have 16 of them in parallel, and then they spin that around. So now you have 16 measurements at any given point for the whole 360. So these are the common sensors in robotics, and you'll be using one or many of these in your time at RoboJackets.